tell the people the truth, like what was really going on, because you point fingers at certain people, but you're not really addressing your own actions at what you did. For you to go PC under these conditions, when you already all of us, the whole compound is locked down. You ain't even facing nobody. Well, I can't speak as far as like you know what his mind frame was at the time because he wasn't in his mind mind frame because. But like I said, he was kirking out on the K2. He wasn't himself. This is OG Freeze, man, underscore zero one nine, man. And I'm right here rocking with Video Wayne. Third time around, baby. Third time around. And I just did 20 years. I was there. I was there for the whole situation that happened with Kodak. I know exactly what happened. Uh, I was looking at the page yesterday. Some conversation about Kodak Black. What was going on with that situation? After I seen the interview on Drinking Champs where he said something about Big Boy, he said something about T.I. He get into it with 21 Savage, he get into it with Lotto. Mm -hmm. Tell the people the truth, like what was really going on because you point fingers at certain people but you're not really addressing your own actions at what you did. And especially at that particular time because at that time, he had already was getting into it with T.I. about certain little stuff, saying little remarks about him and Tiny. He also made, went on made a statement of disrespecting Nipsey about their respect and I guess Laura London or something like that at that particular time. Mm -hmm. When you make a statement like that that he made, he had upset a lot of cribs. And that was another thing that he would had to face coming out on the on the penitentiary yard. Because in the penitentiary, all the cribs are together, along with the bloods. So the cribs and bloods was together. During this particular situation, it's also got to be dealt with or politicked out with the cribs with him coming on the yard because they one they together. You see what I'm saying? So he desired to come he wanted to come on the yard. No. You know, so when you come into Big Sandy, the first thing you do is you have to go into a quarantine unit, and you have to stay in the quarantine for two weeks before they allow you out into the population because you come coming from another prison and they want to make sure you don't have it. So for you to go PC under these conditions, when you already is damn near all of us, the whole compound is locked down. You ain't even facing nobody. So he come out of quarantine after them two weeks. How, how do you know he's in PC because he didn't come on the yard? Or? Or, because one thing, the officer is going to get you from the PC unit, walk you through the unit to the shoot. It's a long walk. That's what they call it in the, in the federal system. Like, man, take that walk, make that left. So when you walk in, they got to secure the whole compound. Secure the compound, they're going to announce it over there. Secure the compound, secure the compound. So now when they secure the compound, people's going to come to the door and they're going to see you walking from the, the people come from the yard, the compound officer is gonna come in and you because they don't work the unit, come in, grab you, and have to escort you past everybody along the walk to walk you to the shoe. So during when they saying secure the compound, everybody's gonna come to the door, they looking, and they're looking out the window. Oh shit, that's buddy, that's dude. Where you, uh, where you going? Like, so this is the type of buzz you're gonna get around the prison. So now just go find the door. We got our ways of communicating. People are gonna communicate certain stuff to people that's on the yard and that's on the compound. You know what I'm saying? We, you know, in prison, they got everybody got different communicating different ways. And you see this with your own eyes. You see? Yeah, you watching this? He, he made a conscious decision on his own to check himself in, just like he made himself a conscious to call his mother and be like, "They don't have a drug program here. They putting their hands on me." You feel what I'm saying? This type of situation. So that's why I see it. The detail part as far as they had a drug program. Big saying I taught the drug program. I taught it. And he was making those statements because he was trying to leave, they're trying to get out of it. Or well, whatever he was doing, I don't know. I can't speak as far as like, you know, what his mind frame was at the time because he wasn't in his mind frame frame because like I said, he was kirking out on the K2. He wasn't himself. Mm. And you know where that come from? When you say cooking out on the K2, what's that? Like when you start having episodes throwing up, you get violent, you barking like a dog, you making animals noises you locking up because a lot of that stuff have when you smoke you smoke a chemical so when you smoke the chemical you, people have a different reaction to the chemical that they smoking so sometimes people don't be in their right mind it's looked down upon by other inmates in the prison you know what i'm saying it's kind of like you're a crackhead mm. that's how people look at you when you smoke k2 your respect level drops because you got dudes that's doing K2, these type of dudes, they cleaning cells, they watching dudes drawers, and socks, they do a lot of stuff to degrade yourself. So this is the type of image that you come from TV to this phase. 
So now me not knowing you, I only see this character. So I just want to use that particular incident. Not like I said, it ain't no beef towards him or nothing like that. I just wanted the kids to know that you have to separate entertainment from reality because the entertainment is not going to tell you itself. You know what I'm saying? And I'm here to tell you that this is not a lifestyle that you have to choose. You feel what I'm saying? And the reason, and that's one of the reasons why I respect Lil Scrappy. I respect Lil Scrappy because it was an interview he did one time. And one of the things Lil Scrappy mentioned about was his experience in Fulton County Jail. He was saying his experience that he experienced in jail helped change who he was. He realized he wasn't no part of prison. Mm. Mm. The extra mattresses was cool, he said. The extra food, the little bit of attention that you getting, yeah, all this cool, but jail ain't, nah, this ain't for me. I'm, I'm gonna do my reality TV thing and I'm gonna get my money like this. He said that? Yeah. Yeah, okay. You, okay. I respect that, let me know you mature as a man. You know what I'm saying? The songs he was making, crunk. He was doing crunk music. Back and wild kids was feeding into that. But to come from that, to be from that stage of his life and to be able to distinguish and say, man, I don't want no part of jail. Even as a rapper, right? Even as to say that. That's that's a man I respected that and I looked at him in a whole new light when I heard that interview. Man, ain't nothing cool about jail. Nothing. You feel what I'm saying? Ain't nothing cool about jail. Everybody ain't built for that. Even in the prison system, we know certain people ain't fighters. My homeboy might not be a fighter, but he mind his business. He looking at TV. I'm going to take up for him. He ain't a fight. I am, though. So you can come in and be yourself and be real. This dudes that's around that's going to treat you accordingly and treat you how, you how you carry yourself. If this man going to commissary, sitting in front of the TV, mind his business, He's, he's not gambling, he's not participating in the drug activity or whatever that's going on in the prison then. You're really not gonna bother that man. Most of the, having the people in prison is supposed to happen to them because they don't disrespect somebody. You feel what I'm saying? And respect level and the pen is real high. It's real high. 